Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. Um, a little while ago, one of my team members, Chris Davis, uh, reached out to me and she said, hey, I just heard something on NPR's Morning Edition and I would love you to make it into a vlog topic. So here's the topic. She was hearing a guy named Tom Caliccio being interviewed on NPR's Morning Edition and he said something and the direct quote is, calories are cheap, but nutrition is expensive. Calories are cheap, but nutrition is expensive. And she thought to herself, Susan Pierce Thompson would refute that. And she said, would you? Like, what do you think about that? Calories are cheap, but nutrition is expensive. And uh, thank you, Chris Davis, for the topic. And I just wanna say, I totally refute that. So in almost always, I totally refute that statement. Um, but there's one way in which, or a couple ways in which I agree with it. So let me break it down for you. So first of all, um, lately I've been talking about this study that was done by George Washington University, um, where they looked at the costs of obesity to an individual. I'm not talking about the societal costs, which we'll get to in a second, but to an individual, and this is why I have this sheet in my hand because I had to write down the figures. Um, these are professors from George Washington University's health economics program. And they found that the direct costs and indirect costs and costs due to lost productivity for someone who is obese, for a male, each year, they're gonna spend an extra $2,646. And an obese woman will spend an extra $4,879, almost $5,000 for a woman to be obese on an annual basis. The cost to be overweight were in the hundreds of dollars per year, um, but the cost to be obese are severe. Um, now, if you add the value of lost life, which you can read in their report, this is easy to Google online, by the way, the George Washington University um, report on this. Um, if you add the value of lost life, now the annualized costs of being obese go up to $6,500 for a man and $8,400 for a woman. So just like outrageous costs. Now, um, those costs just, I mean, those numbers just speak for themselves, right? That's not cheap. That is not cheap. That's a lot of money that you're spending just to carry around that excess weight. That's extra money in terms of lost productivity at work, increased insurance costs of all kinds, increased gas that you're putting in your car, um, just all kinds of costs. Now, that report did not include the excess money that you spend on food. Now, hear me, you spend extra money on food if you're overweight or obese because food costs money and you're eating more food than your body needs, right? And the food that is eaten in direct response to a craving is the most expensive food ever. It's food that you completely don't need. Like that chocolate bar that you drive specifically to a convenience store to buy, like that's money you don't need to spend at all. Like your body doesn't need it. It's not like you're making dinner out of that chocolate bar, right? That's just excess food, just like a complete waste of money. And if you actually look at like the hankering to go out to eat to, you know, for entertainment and comfort and whatever, those restaurant meals where if you do bright line eating, you stop eating out in restaurants quite as much and quite as impulsively. Um, yeah, you're saving a lot of money if you're eating responsibly as opposed to eating based on whim like the average American does. We could talk about the actual grocery bill. People who budget carefully and who do the Brightline Eating Bootcamp report that their monthly grocery bill is cut by a third to a half by doing Brightline Eating. So that argument that people make that it's expensive to eat healthy food, not true in Brightline Eating. Their budget for groceries is cut by a third to a half. It is way more economical to go into the grocery store saying, I need to eat 14 pieces of fruit this week. Great, now I can buy a bag of apples and just save a ton of money, you know, or yeah, or a bunch of bananas or whatever. Um, it's also way less expensive to not let produce rot in your fridge. I don't know if you ever did that. I used to spend a lot of money on produce as I was resolving to eat healthy and then a lot of it would rot in my fridge. In Brightline Eating, you know exactly how much food you need to eat. So you end up being very streamlined with the food that you buy. Um, now, it is true that certain healthy foods are more expensive than certain junk foods, like, um, you know, a pint of organic raspberries is expensive. 
but you don't need to eat organic raspberries. A banana is a super cheap piece of fruit. A bag of apples, a bag of oranges, super, super cheap on a per piece basis. So if you're budget conscious, Bright Line Eating will actually structure your food so that you can think, oh, what are the cheapest protein sources? Beans. What are the cheapest grain sources? Rice. What are the cheapest fruits? Bananas, apples, oranges. What are the cheapest? And then you can just like go and get the most economical thing. What are the cheapest vegetables? Cabbage. Oh my God. Get a big thing of cabbage, slice it up, saute it with some vinegar. We're talking yum. Um, you might not have thought of that as a, you know, as a vegetable option, but yeah, that's a good one. And it's super inexpensive. I'm talking like, you know, for just a few cents, you get like servings and servings and servings. So anyway, once you're thinking, um, bright line eating wise about categories and quantities of foods, you can like plug in the least expensive fruits, vegetables, proteins, etc. in there. So, um, or you can just enjoy the fact that no matter what foods you eat in those categories, you're probably going to be spending less uh, money on food than you used to. So yeah, I don't agree that calories are cheap, but nutrition is expensive. Um, now, the other way that I don't agree, and this is a biggie, is that the cost of being unhealthy is astronomical to the individual and to the society. So in that George Washington University report, um, most of the costs of being overweight and obese were direct medical costs. You know, just the co-pays for all the prescriptions, the visits to the doctor, the hospital, the urgent care, like, yeah, having a heart attack, not cheap. Getting type two diabetes, not cheap. Those calories, those extra calories, calories that we're consuming as a population, not cheap at all. The World Economic Forum estimates that over the next 20 years, we are going to spend $47 trillion on the diseases caused by the food that we're putting in our mouth. $47 trillion. That is not cheap by anyone's estimation. And the money that we're paying for Medicaid and Medicare and emergency room visits due to all the emergency situations of like low blood sugar and heart attacks and all those things that are happening to people who are overweight and obese because of the food that they're putting in their mouth. We cannot afford it anymore. $47 trillion. By 2030, 50% of us in America will be obese. By 2030, we are headed into a financial nightmare. Those calories are not cheap. Not only are they not cheap, they are, they are sending us down financially fast. Now, there's another way that calories aren't cheap, and that's in the waste of a life. So if you ask someone who's obese on a survey, they will tick off the box that says, I'm waiting to live my life till I lose the weight. Yeah, I'm not going to start living until I get this weight off me. And they're trying four and five new diets each year, not succeeding, unless they're doing bright line eating. <laughs> um, and what they could have done with their life, the relationships they could have been forming, the days in the park riding a bicycle that they could have been having, whatever um, goals or aspirations or education they would have gotten. But no, they're waiting to live their life till they lose the weight. So that's not cheap either. Like on a, like on a soul level, just about the most expensive thing you can do is waste your life being overweight or obese and thinking that you have to solve this problem before you can actually live the life that you feel like you want to live or that you were meant to live. So, um, yeah, calories are not cheap. Now, one of the ways that calories are cheap, but nutrition is expensive actually is true is that we are subsidizing as a, well, the United States, the United States government is subsidizing crappy food. Meaning, as a government, we are pouring money into the production of commodity crops, corn, wheat, soybeans. Now, these are not crops that are meant, that are going into like soybeans. It's not going into organic tofu. These are, this is like commercial soybeans that go into partially hydrogenated soybean oil. Vegetable oils are, are making up about 23% of an American's diet right now. Vegetable oils and french fries and chips and popcorn, just straight up trans fats, vegetable oils. Um, a lot of that is partially hydrogenated soybean oil, which is huge in omega-6s. That imbalance in omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids is making people depressed, um, feeling profoundly unwell. 
So in that sense, calories are cheap is true. Like the crappy calories are cheaper than they should be because we are subsidizing them. Like we are paying farmers to make this crappy food and they actually wouldn't be able to make it. Like it would not be a financially viable business for them if they weren't getting so much money from the government to make the crappy food. So if the government would stop subsidizing crap food and would start subsidizing organic raspberries, all of a sudden, um, yeah, certain foods that we now think of as expensive, like organic raspberries, would get cheaper. That would be awesome. So that's one way that calories are cheap, but nutrition is expensive is true. Calories are artificially cheap because the government's pouring so much money into it. Um, and healthy foods are artificially a little more expensive because they're not receiving any subsidies. Um, still, you eat the Bright Line Eating way, even with all that in place, and you save money on your grocery bill. So um, I still don't buy that on balance, calories are cheap and nutrition is expensive. <sighs> but there's one way that I want to say that this um, myth that keeps getting perpetuated, that cheap food is, is uh, that crappy food is cheap, right? That it's, 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 it's easier financially, it's less expensive to buy, you know, drive through fast food. There's one way in which I think that's true. And that is for parents who are poor and working more than one job and just trying to make ends meet. When you've got kids and you're poor and you're working more than one job, there is very, very little discretionary time. And the reality is that good food needs to be cooked. It just does. You, to eat healthy, to do bright line eating, most of your meals need to be cooked by you in your kitchen. End of story. And when you're doing, you know, working multiple jobs and you've got kids and your kids have already had their brains warped by our food system, they won't eat healthy food anymore. They're already like the rats who were fed the standard American diet on a buffet. Those rats, when you took the standard American diet, I'm talking like bacon, sausage, cheesecake, ice cream, frosting, those, that's what they fed the rats, an unlimited buffet for 23 hours a day. Then they took that food away from the rats and gave them standard rat pellets, like what you would feed a pet rat to eat. The rats wouldn't eat the pellets anymore. They starved themselves, literally starved themselves, didn't eat for three weeks and had to be euthanized. We've turned our kids into that by giving them chronic access to the standard American diet. And when you take that food away and you try to replace it with whole real food, they rebel and they won't eat. Um, which is very stressful for a parent to have a kid saying, I'm not eating, I'm not, I don't want to eat that. Rah, 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 rah. And you've got to get to your, to your night job and you don't have time to cook the food anyway. And a meal of, you know, something that looks like a meal with, you know, different kinds of foods and whatever is so easy to get from a drive through You just say, I'll take number three, please. <laughs> meal number three, please. And then it's, you know, four bucks or five bucks or whatever. Whereas if you went home, getting something on the table that looks like a meal takes a lot of time, takes a lot of cooking, and then your kid won't eat it. And, you know, how much time did you just spend trying to do that anyway? And the cheap foods are like, you know, beans, rice, you know, whatever, and your kid's like, yeah, I'm not eating that, right? So if you're a poor parent, if you're a poor parent, then it's true. Calories are cheap and nutrition is expensive. Nutrition is hard because it takes time and it takes effort and your kids aren't having it because their brains are already warped. So that's the way that I think that saying is true. And it breaks my heart. As a parent, as, as a not poor parent working two jobs, right? I mean, I work plenty, but I'm not quite in that situation. I still experience it. My kids are like, I don't want to eat home. Can we go to a restaurant? Because their brains already just from birthday parties and school lunches are warped by the foods that they're exposed to. It is very, very hard to be a parent in today's society. So if you're a poor parent, yeah, calories are cheap and nutrition is expensive. But those calories are gonna become expensive quickly as your kids develop type two diabetes and gain weight rapidly and get teased by their friends and learn to hate themselves. And uh, yeah, I don't know what we're doing about this as a society. We need to wake up, stop subsidizing those cheap calories and start to treat food 
as the medicine and the bringer of wellness that in all rights it should be. But it's not helpful for us to be perpetuating the notion that calories are cheap and it's expensive to eat healthy because it's not true. It's not true. Bananas are not expensive. It's just not true. If you eat sanely, your grocery budget and your overall food budget is way smaller than if you eat according to every whim. Try it. Do the 14 day challenge and see what happens to your grocery bill as you actually follow the Bright Line Eating Food Plan and eat only in exactly what your body needs to survive. Give it a try. It is not more expensive. It is cheaper. You will save money. So that's the weekly vlog. Thanks for letting me rant. <laughs> it's lovely as always to be with you and I'll see you next week.